Oh, what's up guys and welcome. You are watching Fuzzy Fitness. Starting this video with the new update from Good Vito who is just under 8 weeks out of his pro debut now. So this debut is also one of those which people are eagerly waiting for. And it is one of the most anticipated pro debuts of 2023. Now I wish he was more careful during that guest posing because that puts a big question mark on which version of Good Vito will we see at Europa Pro. He has such amazing quads that even though he isn't allowed to train them as hard as he was doing before the knee ligament rupture, but you guys can still see his legs still look incredibly good. Now I know natural light does enhance the definition and that is how this picture was taken. But still he looks extremely impressive and there is still plenty of time left before he steps on stage. So with a coach like Chris Aceto in his corner now, I think there is no need to worry about his conditioning. He is gonna make him suffer until he gets shredded to the bone. Now the major problem we see here is that V2 is going up against the likes of Regan Grimes and Nathan Diasha. And these are multiple times Olympians we are talking about. On top of that, Regan Grimes is coming back after that very long offseason and he has his own things to worry about. There is a lot of pressure on him this time. He has got so much to prove not only to the bodybuilding world but to himself as well. So hopefully he is gonna be bigger than last year with the same waistline that he had before. And with the structure that Regan has, a little more size just makes him as dangerous as anyone else. The only thing that he needs to do is bring razor sharp conditioning. Charles Griffin has been training his upper body for more than a month now. This guy is changing very fast, but still no word on what show he plans to do to get his Olympia qualification for this year. But looking at how ripped his hamstrings are in one of the latest training videos, I think he is gonna compete sooner than later. Charles was really unlucky that he suffered from that pack tear, otherwise he would have been on stage multiple times already and probably would have already qualified for the big show. The physique that he presented at California Pro last year, that was so complete head to toe. He is always shredded. He has one of the best backs in the business. But the main weakness that he has now is that he doesn't take a lot of space on stage, meaning he isn't that wide. And although you can get away with it during the Olympia qualifiers, but it really comes into play in big shows like the Olympia. One variable will remain constant for classic physique this year. Chris Bumstead is most probably gonna win his fifth title as long as he comes in looking similar to what we saw last year and their aim is to bring an even better version than that. So in my opinion no one is touching Chris Bumstead and apparently Chris has silently been working very hard. Another big question is that how will Terence Ruffin bounce back? and show the bodybuilding world that he is still the next guy in line to win the classic physique title. Terence wasn't expecting to drop down to 5th spot last year. In fact, no one was. That was his biggest version ever. And that made him confident enough going into the show that he can win the Olympia title last year. And the real question is, was Terence really that off? Or was the competition like Ramon and Urs leveled up their game so much that the judges just couldn't ignore. As a two times former Arnold Classic champion and two times runner up at the Olympia, it will be a mistake to sleep on this guy. And if you guys remember the history, Terence was in worst position in 2018 when he placed 9th. He took the next year off, came back in 2020 and placed 2nd, beating a former champion Brian Ansley. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked the video and smash the subscribe button if you wanna come back for more. Thanks for watching.